Welcome back and thanks for joining me. Um, if you are enjoying these and you haven't already, please do consider hitting like and subscribe. Today I'm going to answer a few more of your questions. A question from Dan Kirsten, who said, A thing that fascinates me is the making of an entirely new screenplay. I mean, one not based on any pre-existing novel or story. Surely it can't begin in finished screenplay format, i.e. just with actors, dialogue, and terse references to scenes and movement. Uh, if it was, you'd have to have a parallel set of notes on screenplay to ensure readers could see the story evolve better in their mind. Surely there must be some a sort of background novel done first and then a screenplay written. Or am I understanding the imagination of producers, directors, underestimating <laughs> the imagination of producers, directors, and actors? Uh, usually, and I think different uh, writers have a different process in how they work, but typically it's pretty common to work initially with an outline. And that's kind of how I develop a story idea is I might have a concept and that's how I also can tell if I think it's actually a story or just a scene. So sometimes people will throw out ideas and, you know, and be like, well, that's a really cool idea, but it's just a scene. How does it develop into an entire story that has a beginning, middle, and end? Not that every film or TV show has that, but that's what we're mostly used to in the types of programming that we watch. So you want to sort of, you want to have some sort of an arc. You want there to be an end goal. So you decide it's going to be about, you know, saving the ranch or something like that. So if you, you kind of work backwards and forwards uh, in, in creating your outline, that maybe your end goal is that the townspeople triumph over the greedy land developers. So that's your end thing. So then you want to contrast that from the beginning. Um, and then you want to present a bunch of problems and challenges along the way that lead to this ultimate climax um, of the confrontation and the triumph or failure, depending on the story. I kind of have a bit of an outline that I sort of slot basic ideas into, um, you know, where how, how much do you want the beginning to contrast to the end? So what's the beginning situation that establishes uh, let's the audience know what um, what the story is going to be about. What the tone of the of the is it a drama? Is it a dark comedy? Is it a comedy? Is it a mystery? All those types of things you'll establish very early on, so you let the audience know what's going on. So all of those notes and everything are put into there, and then I can see where the problem areas are. It's like well. I got to here, but now how do I get from here to here? And now we're doing the same thing over and over. Oh, there's a bunch of scenes that are very similar, which can be boring to an audience. They're like, okay, I've seen this. Now where are we going? That's when you start going, oh, you know, let me go get a snack or something. You want it to be compelling and pull the audience along. How does each scene make you want to see the next scene? Just like when you're reading a book where the chapters end, the clever writers make you go, oh, I can't just end at this chapter, I have to start the next chapter because they've set up some some crisis point or you go to commercial and you're like, there's like a cliffhanger before the commercial and you're, you have to come back and see what's gonna happen. So you're looking to develop those things. And then, then yeah, you do start figuring out um, where your locations are. So a screenplay will have all of that and you might initially depends who you're writing the script for. To a degree, you want enough information there that someone understands what they're reading, but you don't want to micromanage the director or the actors. But yes, ideally, the dialogue and the characters and everything unravels that story without it having to be explained. But there is the question of if someone's reading it, how much do they need to see? What do you need to include so they understand what's happening? But your scene descriptions, you don't want it to be like a novel. You're not going to get carried away with, with tons and tons of detail, just enough to establish it and give a feel for what's happening. Um, same thing with, with the actors. The dialogue shouldn't need to be fully explained 
uh, but there'll be need to be enough for an actor to have any clue what's going on. But some of that can be in the character description. And as you read other parts of the story, you begin to see how that character fits into what's going on. And as an actor, you can feel, well, what's your arc? You're going from here to here. So with what you're learning about the character, how might the character feel about different scenes and what's going on and what's their objective in a scene? Why are they even in a scene? What are they trying to accomplish? So all those things you try and craft within a screenplay. And you'll have an overall synopsis and things like that. So that'll, that'll help. And usually if a person's going to get a script, they're going to get a little bit of information that will set up certain things and put you in a particular mindset when you're reading it so you understand style and that will play into how you read it. I hope that kind of made sense, but that's, I think, the best I can do in terms of that concept of how people approach it. From Corinne Del Conte, it was amazing to me to hear you say that when directing your series in Canada, you essentially memorized all of your dialogue for the entire series, so you could always be prepared to jump into a scene. I would imagine that such memorization would be a totally immersive process. So questions. Can you elaborate on your own personal process for memorizing your lines as an actor? Uh, for me, it is a little bit of getting into a zone. Uh, I will take my dialogue. So let's say this is my dialogue. And I will start at the beginning of the page of the scene. And oftentimes I will like move down the, the page like that and like memorize basically one line at a time and understanding where the cue is coming from. So I'll learn the first line and I'll say it a number of times until I know it. Then I'll go back to the top of the scene and start at the top and then keep adding. And each time I add a new line that I've learned, I'll go back to the top and incorporate that as I go down. Then I'll add another one. Then I'll go back and go through, or I might do three or four and then go back. So I do it in increments like that so that I'm constantly re reviewing what is there and kind of solidifying what I already know. And I get so that I sort of visualize the page in my mind, so I'll know, okay, well, this was the this was the first line, and then blah, blah, so the person said this, and then there's my next line, and then they said this. So I'll kind of n have this picture of the page, and, I'll, and so if I'm going along and I'm like, ah, there's something there, and I, what's that line down there at the bottom of the page? So I start associating those images with finding the dialogue and trying to connect it to the cue lines and what and what's going on. That's my process. I start first with the lines and then as I review, I start digging more into why am I saying this or what's going on and what am I responding to? So I build more of the subtext and the meaning and the depth of what's being said and connect that to the line. So then the cues become triggers for my response. So something that's said, I I, I then begin to go, oh, well, that is creating a certain emotional response in my character. So, of course, I'm going to respond this way. And so I, I kind of build it that way. And then a lot of times I also put things on, on tape. I'll tape them. I'll record them. So I will record my cue line. You know, so-and-so says, uh, good morning. What would you like for breakfast? And then, I'll, and then I will silently to myself read my line so that there's enough space, enough of a pause in the in the audio. And then I will say the next line of the of the other people's dialogue. And each time I get to a line of mine, I will just within the timing of how I'm likely to say it, silently say it to myself. So there, is, there are those gaps. So then and that's what I did with um, when I'm learning a play or with all that dialogue I had to learn for the all the episodes up in Canada. And then as I'm driving around, I'll throw that audio on and then I can just keep reviewing the scene. And it also gives me a chance to sort of hear another person talking so I can begin to put together what I'm hearing with what I'm responding and how I feel about it and start playing with different aspects of the character and reactions to build the layers of the reactions. So that's another thing I find very helpful as a way to um, to review it. And then you asked, uh, do you think that having all of those lines and stories in your head affects your dream life? Interesting. 
She says, I know that probably sounds like a really strange question, but I've been noticing lately that what I'm concentrating on during the day, even shows and series that I'm binging can reappear during my sleep. Just wondering if memorizing an entire TV series would stick in your memory during an altered dream state. Not so much when I'm learning a show, uh, but I know when I'm doing theater, when I'm in the rehearsal period, I will definitely, as I'm falling asleep often, trying reviewing either dialogue or choreography or lyrics, uh, harmonies, various different things like that. So quite often in my sleep, I find that I'm reviewing aspects of the rehearsals. So that tends to happen during rehearsals, uh, but not so much when I'm doing just in the early memorization process of a show. I don't tend to do that at that point. Um, I do know that there are uh, sort of universal actors' dreams or nightmares. Uh, most performers I talk to have those nightmares about completely forgetting lines or having some sort of mishap where they can't enter a room or they're I've had them where I'm supposed to go on and I'm not prepared. I, I, I don't know my lines. I don't know where my entrances are. And I'm just in a panic because I have to go on, but I'm not prepared. Or I'm running late and I know I have to get someplace, but I can't seem to get there. And I'm going to miss uh, a show or uh, a performance or something like that. So uh, I don't know what's up with that in terms of uh, but I've talked to so many actors who have similar nightmares. <laughs> Thank you very much for your questions. If you have a question, do put them in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.